you know, this is really cool. I am going to give you, as somebody who does public speaking daily, whether it be in front of a camera, whether it be in front of an actual audience, so I've got two of them, right? The imaginary audience and the actual audience. Spent my life doing it. That's obviously my gift in life. I think I'm very good at doing that and pretty much just that. I barely know how to tie my shoes, but I'm good at that. Why? Because as we're discussing on self-help all the time, self-help is about actualizing yourself, getting very good at being you. I think that this is an extension of public speaking. We are going to have to go through the old cliche that people are more scared of public speaking than they are of death. Everyone on planet Earth, fact. Obviously it's just, you know, there's a ranking and normal people are like, yeah, I'm more scared of death than getting in front of a crowd. But most people aren't normal in a crazy world. And so they are terrified of getting on stage and going, um, so this is uh, how long it takes a baby duck to become a big duck. And uh, I, I read the Ugly Duckling book once. They're basically scared of being an idiot in front of people because what's the primal root of this? It is ostracization. Is that the word? Being ostracized. Because that was death. Back in the day, if you made an ass of yourself and everybody hated you, just like in old Aboriginal communities, they just push you out, spear you in the leg, and then you'd wander off into the desert and die. That was the tribal way of doing things. And so we have evolved to not rock the boat. We have evolved that if you make an ass of yourself public, that's the end of your life. I'm here to tell you that we don't live in those societies anymore. If you make an ass of yourself, if I make an ass of myself in front of the world, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll just find more people to make an ass in front of myself and I'll just keep doing it until I get better. Now, I have horror stories of things that still keep me up at night, of times that I've bombed in front of hundreds of people and it's been fucked, but it doesn't matter. I'm still extremely wealthy as a result of doing this <laughs> because I just got good at this one skill. Now, that's the side point. You get really good at your one skill, you will be obviously very successful at it because people will have nowhere else to go. They have to go to you. But let's just go on to my tip on public speaking. There is one thing that I think that you should remember. The first one, well, actually, no, let's go through a couple of them. The first one is vibe. People are much... People don't really care if you say like a lot and but or say some stupid point. What they care about, and it's exactly the same as when you're going to a party and talking one-on-one. -on -one. That's what you really have to get your head around. The way that someone perceives you when you walk up to them is pretty much the way that most people are going to perceive you when you're on stage. Obviously, they all have their own life experiences and whatnot. But if you are engaging, if you are having fun, the rest of the audience will have fun as well. How do you do that? This is where we get a little bit more nuanced because the main point that you should always say when you are doing public speaking is that you should, quote, be yourself. You should just go up there, as they say in every stand-up comedy book ever, the phrase, my house. As soon as you walk in, you should have the same feeling that you're just walking into your friend's living room and you are talking to them like the way that you would speak to your friends in the living room while they're pulling bongs. That's when you're going to be good on stage. Also, you should prep yourself up. You should be doing a bunch of jack, jumping jacks. If you can do one thing before going on stage, I will always recommend that you should exercise before going on stage. At the very least, you should listen to a song and jump up that you like to pump yourself up so you're going up with a good energy. If you have nothing else going for you, just do that. You will fare better than everybody else in the group when you're doing public speaking. That's the first tip. Second tip is if you've obviously got time, you should probably meditate so you can center yourself and you can realize that when there are pauses, people are paying attention still. And if you screw up, it doesn't really matter. People are just gonna be sitting there half absorbed. Really all you are trying to do when you are on stage is engage people. That is the only task you have, engage. The way that you are engaged in is if you are the same as you are when you're being your quote best self, that works. When this first clicked to me was when, uh, there's a comedian of mine that I really think is just so underrated. I feel it's a true national tragedy that he's not as famous as Dave Hughes. He used to be up there actually in the 90s, but Greg Fleet, I think, incredible writer, 
incredibly insightful, so good at putting on a character. He's got everything going for him that a good comedian has, I think, which is just that you're good at writing, you're good at performing, you're good at telling stories. He's an excellent raconteur. Then when I started learning about his life, it all made sense. The way that he is on stage is the way he is when he is most comfortable. When, and, and, and there is a, another deeper layer to this, but we'll just go into this first. He, the reason that I'm using the talking in front of people is because you talk to Merrick and Rosso, who I also think were an incredible radio duo. There's always this idea, the radio industry is constantly trying to dangle millions of dollars in front of them to get back together, but they hate each other now, so they're not going to ever do it. But they want them back and they always said that uh, the way that we interacted was us just telling jokes and like shooting the shit that we were doing exactly with our friends that were just pulling bongs when we had no money and we were on the dole. It's exactly the same with Greg Fleet. All he used to do was just go, he wanted to be an actor, but he went into his friends' living rooms and he'd make them piss themselves because he was just such a good storyteller. And when he first started doing stand-up, uh, Obviously, there was that adjustment period that everybody goes, and then one day he realized, oh, I'm supposed to be exactly the same as I am when I'm just making my friends piss themselves when they're at home. He bought, brought that to the stage. And it obviously helps with him because you can tell that he's one of those guys, as soon as he's on stage, your perception of him, this is where it gets deeper. This is a tie-in to something that I actually talk about on Jordan Chase, so you should sign up because I have way more tips about anything that you would ever need to know about in terms of enhancing your human experience behind there. Very, very good value. You are never going to have a better investment than the minimal amount of money that I ask for for you to go on to Jordan Chase. It's not a better investment for you, whether it is that you want to increase your relationships, uh, health, whether you want to increase your own health, whether you want to succeed in life monetarily, in terms of your job, in terms of your output, in terms of your impact on the planet, there is not a better investment. But he was saying that when he was on stage, when he started just acting like he was acting in front of his friends, that's when the audience started to react and then he realized, wow, this is the easiest thing on planet Earth. You know what my realization of that was? And this is something that I, it was actually when I started getting reviews and people started writing, Jordan on stage is like that hip teacher in the hizzy department at high school that everyone always thought, oh yes, we're going into Mr. Pesky's class next. And they usually always taught something fairly boring like legal studies or modern history or geography. Not that I personally think that those are boring. Well, I think legal study sucks, but you know, they were always teaching one of those obscure subjects that not many people took, but the people that did take them, every time you ever ask someone, what was your favorite subject at school? Mine personally was geography because we had Miss Taylor and she was just this hilarious lesbian that used to, again, treat it like it was a stand-up show. She'd just be sitting there talking and then when other people would be talking, she'd be like, yeah, keep your hands together. Oh, what? Well, now you guys can jack each other off later. Don't tell the principal I said that. <laughs> anyway, so about uh, toast sale salmon. So she was always really engaging because she really liked what she was doing. But everybody has that person. And I think that that's what I remind them of because this is where it starts getting quite Freudian. Uh, my mum was a teacher and before she was forced to medically retire for reasons that I will never tell publicly. But when she was forced to medically retire, uh, the teaching instinct lived on. And people used to always say that. You can tell that he is the son of a teacher, right? So when I'm on stage, when I think about it, if I'm going to put on a persona, I just always think, yeah, 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 I'm that geography teacher where everyone went, oh yes, Mr. Pesky's class is next. Oi, Mr. Pesky, Mr. Pesky, do you know about brasses? Yeah, I know about brasses, mate, but you shouldn't. Ha, 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 now shut up, like that works for me because that is close to me. That is close to my persona that I should be taking when I am on stage. There are different personas that people have in their life where they are their best selves in specific scenarios, but in that particular specific scenario, that scenario, when I'm on stage, the best me is being the cool geography teacher on stage. That works for my personality, the way that people see me. And the reason they do see me that way is because I am that way. And I am that way because of my 
Freudian childhood experiences. That is me. So if you need to find out, if you want a quick shortcut into getting into the person that you should be when you are on stage, when you are performing, that is how you should do it. You should go back and think, what was I like as a child? What were, the, what were those, what was the thing that when people uh, were engaged, why were they engaged? There was two reasons that they'll be engaged. It's one, because you were passionate about what you were talking about. And two, it is because in your family world, you were that person. This makes a lot of sense when it comes to Greg Fleet. With Greg Fleet, when he was talking about, uh, you know, I was just really good at just hanging out and shooting the shit with friends, and that's the persona that I took up on stage. He was good at that because his dad was one of those charismatic, uh, you know, gigolo types that had secret families, and but even though he had secret families and the women found out, they'd be like, oh my God! but I just can't leave him because that's who he is. He's so intriguing. He's one of those guys, extremely charismatic. So obviously that guy learned, because that was his father figure, he learned to be an incredible raconteur. He's really good at shooting the shit and making people, people feel comfortable. You are gonna have something like that that works for you. And it is your job to bring that onto stage. So you need to know what your persona is for that. You can break this down. And in fact, if you want to, I'm going to give you some homework that I think would be very beneficial for you, which is scenarios that you face in life. So obviously public speaking, what's the type of person that you should be when you are on stage? When it comes to your romantic life, when are you most connected to your partner? What is the persona that you are bringing? This is not, this is, and again, this is not putting on a persona. It is just everybody has different aspects of their personality and you are highlighting one of those aspects in these situations. I want you to think about that. Anyway. Make sure that you sign up to Jordan Shanks because if you thought that that was interesting, there is so many tips on there. This is the smallest investment for the biggest return on your money, guaranteed. If you don't, you can cancel at any time, obviously. But the amount of knowledge and information that I have read in this particular field, you are getting a world-class education behind that. Ask anybody that's on there. Ask anybody that's on there. Millionaires, people that got their ideal job, people that got their ideal partner. It was all as a result of Jordan Chang. So sign up today.